Hello and, and welcome back uh, to the lecture series on enzyme engineering. Uh, we have already discussed uh, about the immobilization of enzyme and its consequences. And today we will be discussing about uh, enzyme deactivation. Uh, this is also a major phenomena and uh, a lot of us face it uh, while working with enzymes because enzymes are very fragile. So they are so large molecules and uh, even a slight change in the environment can have a deleterious effect on our enzymatic systems. So uh, one must work very carefully with enzymes so as to avoid deactivation. But anyways, we must know what deactivation is and um, what are the kinetics of enzyme deactivation. So since enzymes are large protein molecules with complex and fragile structure and it gets easily destabilized by various factors like uh, change in temperature, pH, ionic strength, uh, by use of solvents, detergents, heavy metals and other weak forces. So these are the various factors by which enzymes can be deactivated and if we consider the enzyme deactivation to be a reaction of type of this simple type. So we, are, uh, we can see that active enzymes are getting converted into inactive forms in the deactivation process. So we can consider active enzymes as the reactants and the inactive enzymes as the products, the unfavorable products. So if we uh, write the rate of uh, this reaction, the rate of deactivation, then we would see that the rate of deactivation is directly proportional to the active enzyme concentration according to the rate law. Okay. So now if this proportionality constant is removed, we get a kinetic constant and this kinetic constant can be called as the deactivation rate constant. Okay. So now rate of reaction can also be written as the rate of decrease of active enzyme concentration. So this minus sign denotes the decrease in this rate. Okay. So now uh, this equation can be modified as this equation in the form of differential. And this using the, this differential we can integrate this equation by rearranging the differential. And now we get this form of the equation and we take the active enzyme concentration Ea with the uh, DEA part of the integrate of, of the term and then we integrate this using the limits uh, of the initial conditions to the to any condition T. So the initial at in, initial condition the active enzyme concentration we are considering it to be Ea0. Ea0 is our initial active enzyme concentration. So at time 0 the active enzyme concentration we are considering it as Ea0 and at time t we have an active enzyme concentration of Ea. So we integrate using these limits and we get this the, the integration of 1 upon Ea would be with respect to Dea would be natural log of Ea. Now putting in the boundary conditions we will get upper limit minus the lower limit term. So this would be our final equation. Now the uh, according to laws of logarithm this term can be written as this. So in this form in the this minus subtraction form can be converted into the division form using the logarithmic clause and now this term can also be converted into its exponential form into its power form by using the exponent operator and hence this equation can also be modified as this equation. So these two equations are our, are our final equations. So the rate of deactivation so uh, would be higher for high amount of active enzymes and it would decrease exponentially. So the more active enzyme we have in the in, uh, initially, the more 
and the more time we spend uh, during the deactivation process the more less number of active enzymes we will encounter exponentially so now what is the implication of this deactivation process so we know that uh, during the normal kinetics when everything is very good and uh, the process conditions are optimum for the enzyme to work so we see that let me rub all this we have seen the mechanism of the normal enzyme we have seen the mechanism of the normal enzyme and we will write it down once again okay this was the formula so we know that normal enzymatic reactions they have been defined to undergo this mechanism if the uh, reaction is irreversible then enzyme and substrate combine to form the enzyme substrate complex and it then breaks down into enzyme and products now if i write down the rate constants i prefer using 1 and minus 1 for the forward and the reverse rate of reaction and k2 for the second step so in the mechanism we consider that this is uh, this uh, equilibrium approaches rapidly and it has been observed that this equilibrium do approach very rapidly during the course of the reaction and this remains constant for a very long period of time throughout the reaction until substrate is in excess and so hence we have another theory of uh, you know enzyme kinetics that is the rapid uh, state uh, sorry uh, steady state theory so this is what is a study in the steady state theory so uh, anyways this uh, is the faster step and this is considered to be the slower step amongst these two step of the mechanism so this step is considered to be rate limiting and we define the rate of reaction by this by this term and for maximum rate of reaction for maximum rate we know that all the enzyme that we have put into the system must combine with the substrate to form enzyme substrate complex that is for maximum rate all the enzyme given to it now here i will write it down as all the initial active enzymes must be or we can say just all the active enzymes at any time all the active enzymes must get converted into the enzyme substrate complex at that instant so for maximum rate at any instant this should be the case at any instant the maximum rate of uh, reaction would be dependent upon the active enzyme concentration so during enzyme deactivation this phenomena this maximum rate of reaction would get affected so during deactivation what we will have v max will be equal to k2 and if we if we consider it uh, for initial conditions for initial that is initial condition when deactivation just starts or just before deactivation so we can write it down as v max not will be equal to k2 ea not okay so now we can replace ea from this into this in this equation from this equation so this becomes ea not e to the power minus kdt now again k2 ea not can be written as the maximum velocity under normal conditions or in the initial conditions when deactivation has just started 
just before uh, it has started. So our equation for V max would become V max equal to V max naught e to the power minus k dt. So this is how our V max would get altered during the course of the deactivation process. V max naught is our initial maximum velocity. Now, uh, for enzymes which are not very robust and not very, um, you know, rigid enzymes that do not get easily deactivated, for those enzymes generally, uh, and there are many, there are so many enzymes that are very fragile. And mostly, hence I mentioned that mostly enzymes are very fragile and they are not used to very harsh conditions. So, often we see that uh, we have enzymes, enzymatic products on which uh, the stability of enzymes is frequently reported in terms of its half-life. So, what this half-life is, okay. So, we will discuss shortly about the half-life. half life which is required for reporting the stability of the enzymes Half life is the time required for half the enzyme activity to be lost as a result of deactivation. So, if we have an active enzyme, initial active enzyme concentration of Ka0, so at T equals to 0, enzyme activity we, we have assumed it to be Ka0. So, Half life is that time if we say that T is equal to T half. If we denote it half life as T half. If we denote half life as T half, then it is the time where the activity of enzyme uh, at the yes activity of active enzymes reaches to half of its initial value. Okay. Half life is the time required for half the enzyme activity to be lost as a result of deactivation. That is, we can say the residual activity remaining after half life would be half of the initial value. So now if we use this equation and replace it with the uh, conditions for half life, I am going to write the original equation. This was our original equation. It's better if we uh, use the logarithmic logarithmic equation because eventually we will be converting into logarithmic part. So we have e a upon e a naught equals to minus k d t. So replacing with these conditions at t half at t half this equation would become natural log of e a upon 2 e sorry e a naught upon 2 upon e a naught equals to minus k d t half so we have natural log 1 by 2 And if we remove this minus sign, then uh, this logarithmic part would get reciprocated. Okay. Because this equation, if we multiply this equation by minus 1, then this, this logarithm would be this word. So we will multiply it, multiply this equation by minus 1 and we will get 
नेचुरल लॉग टू अपॉन केरी एंड दिस वुड बी और वैल्यू ऑफ टी हाफ their natural log 2 is a constant and kd is also constant hence a t half is also a constant for every enzyme uh, and this would uh, depend upon the value of the deactivation rate constant of the enzyme so if we can find the value and this we can find it easily by uh, by uh, using a plot of time and the logarithmic of ea upon ea not if we plot a curve between natural log ea upon ea not and time then we will get a negative slope and the slope of this negative slope will be equal to minus kd so the magnitude of kd would be the magnitude of this slope of this curve Okay, so this is all about enzyme deactivation and how to report stability of the enzyme by using half-life. Hope you enjoyed the lecture, and now we will be in future lectures. We will be discussing about the enzyme reactors. Thank you, and have a nice day.